Homework 11, polynomial functions, video 8, multiplicity and zeros. To completely answer the question at the end of the last video about how to predict in advance whether a graph will actually cross an x-intercept or touch it and then turn around, we need to define a couple of terms. The first term I need to define is the zero of a function, f of x. The zero of a function is any value that when you plug it in comes out zero. So for example, in this previous, uh, in this previous function, when we solved it equal to zero, we had two x-intercepts. One of them was negative two, at negative two, the other one was at one. But in relative to the function, these two values are zeros of the function f of x. This may have been called g of x in the previous video, but that's irrelevant. These are the values that when we substitute them into the function make it equal to zero. To find the zeros of a function, you just solve f of x equals zero. To find the zeros, solve f of x is equal to zero. And you might be thinking that's exactly how we find the x-intercepts, and you would be correct. Zeros are characteristics of a function x-intercepts are characteristics of the function's graph. And the relationship is x-intercepts come from zeros, and zeros are illustrated as x-intercepts. But there's a little bit more to it. The multiplicity of a zero, the multiplicity of a zero is the power on the factor that produced the zero. So for example, if we go back to each of these zeros and retrace where they came from, and look at their factors and see what powers are on them. x equals 1 came from the factor x minus 1. The factor x minus 1 had a power of 2. So you would say that for x equals 1, the multiplicity is equal to 2. For the other 0, x equals negative 2, that came from the factor of x plus 2. There was not a power explicitly listed, so it's an implied power of 1. So the multiplicity of x equals 2 is 1. Think of it this way. Multiplicity is just counting how many times the factor is represented. This 2 means that the x minus 1 would be represented twice. So what does multiplicity have to do with everything that we're talking about? About whether or not you cross the x-axis or touch and turn around? If a 0 of f of x has odd multiplicity, has odd multiplicity, then the graph of f of x crosses the x-axis at that zero. So for example, when we had sketched this graph previously, I'm gonna resketch it real quick. I remember what it looked like. When we had sketched this graph previously, at negative two, the multiplicity was odd, which means it was destined to cross at negative two. The other part is, if a zero of f of x has an even multiplicity, so it came from a factor with an even power, then the graph of f of x touches the x-axis at that zero, comma, and turns around. So it was like a failed attempt to cross the x-axis. And we see that over here as well. Our 0 of 1 had a multiplicity of 2, which predicted in advance that at 1 it was going to touch and turn. And that's good information to know in advance if we're sketching a graph. So here's what we know about the intercepts. Y-intercept, stick in 0. Spit out an answer. Not much to look at there. X-intercepts. Solve the function equal to zero. 
when you get your zeros of the function, take note of their multiplicities, the powers that were on the factors that produce the zeros. If your multiplicity is even, you will cross the x-axis at that x-intercept. But if the multiplicity is, and I just said that totally wrong, if the multiplicity is odd, you will cross the x-axis at that x-intercept. If the multiplicity is even, you will touch the x-axis at that x-intercept and then turn around. In the next video, we're going to look at a function that we saw previously and totally analyze it.